Hey guys, Joe here. Um, Dennis and I were talking and I've never actually done a gear dump. So I just got back from a five day deer hunt and thought, hey, you know what? This will be a perfect time for me to go through kind of what I took on this trip, why I took it. I um, also wanna to talk to you about, you know, how I pack my bag a little bit as I go through it. So I'm just gonna start kind of from the outside with actually, hey, what did I wear in? And then get into, I'll probably go into my lid next kind of focus on the outside of the bag, the items that I carry and why I carry them in those locations, and then actually get into the meat of it inside the bag. But, you know, for this hunt, since it was a five day hunt, I ended up taking the IA4K, which is about 4,800 cubic inches when you add everything up, which was actually perfect for this, this type of hunt. Um, out here this year, it's actually been really hot. So I didn't have a ton of extra clothing that I needed to take. I, I paid close attention to the, to the forecast. So I, I limited my rain gear a little bit, um, but I'll walk through all of those details here in just a second on, 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 on the clothing. But um, you know, this, this hunt for us, water was a big issue. And I'll talk to you about that as well as we kind of get into it. So, hey, just starting with the outside, what did I wear? I'll start with my boots actually. Um, these are the Crispy Colorados. I've ran them now. This is my second season running these boots. I've actually got, quite a bit of arthritis in my toes. So I need something that's really, really stiff. So this is actually a four flex. I think they make one that is a five, but this is a four. And it just allows me, you know, not to have any movement with my toes up front. I absolutely love this boot. It's under two pounds. And, you know, it is a, it's, it's an uninsulated boot. Um, it is a wider boot, which I really like that because, you know, I sweat quite a bit when I'm out there. It allows for my feet to kind of, you know, flatten out, so to speak, over the, uh, the course of the hunt. Um, I've been a fan of Crispy for a lot of years now. I've ran several of their different boots, but I've ultimately landed on this as my go-to. And I, I wear this even in the cold of the colds. You know, I just layer up a little bit more with different socks. Um, so this is a boot that I ran and absolutely worked fantastic. One of the things that I do though, is I, I do wear two pairs of socks. So I've got, you know, my, my main sock here, which is, I run the darn tough. Um, I've had great luck with these. You can get them in different weights, different lengths. And these things have just proven to be bulletproof for me. So I run the darn tough, love them. Um, but I won't go out anymore without some type of either silk or nylon liners underneath. These are a game changer for me. As much as my feet sweat, uh, if I don't run these, I will start to get hot spots. I'll start to get blisters. So a couple of years ago, I started running these and typically I'll pack two of these with me and about midway through the trip, I'll rotate. Um, I can usually easily get through a trip in, you know, for a five day hunt with two pair. Um, if I needed to, I could do it with one pair and just wash them out in, in a creek bed or something along, along the trip. But if you have not ever used these and you have issues with blisters, check them out. I think it, you would really be surprised at how well they perform and, um, you know, feet, if they go bad while you're in the back country, that's, uh, that can be a real bummer for your trip and put it, put an end to it in a hurry. So, uh, that's the system that I run for my boots and my socks. You know, Dennis, Dennis introduced me to these pants. Um, actually he gave me these pants, these Prana pants a few years ago, and I've just fell in love with them. You know, as hard as you hunt out there, you just can't seem to wear these things out. I actually just wore the one pants, one pair of pants for five days and they performed exceptionally well. They're, they're a lighter weight pant, um, you know, so they don't really stretch a lot. You know, they stretch a little bit after day four or five, you know, you start to notice it a little bit, but I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm in love with this pant. It's, it breathes well, it's extremely durable, it's quiet, it's soft. Um, and the other thing I like about it is, I don't have to run a belt with these. It has this pull um, sit, you know, tab on here and just allows me to tighten it up and that way I don't have to run a belt which is great because I really don't want to run a belt. A lot of times if I have to, then I'll notice I start to get some hot spots on my back. So I try to avoid that at all costs. Um, so I wore these pants in and then I wore kind of one of my go-tos. I'm a Merino guy. I absolutely love Merino wool. And for me, again, since I, I think because I sweat so much, um, having, having the Merino in there or wearing the Merino doesn't really get stinky like a lot of synthetics will. This was the lightweight. Um, this is a Mountain Ops. This is their lightweight one. I love it. I've got their midweight uh, as well. 
and they just perform exceptionally well out there. They've got, I think, 5% spandex in it. So they hold their shape really good. Um, it's just kind of become my go-to, you know, even just during the week of life. I, I wear these all the time. They've just proven to be really, really good. Um, you know, I also took in one of the, uh, the Cryptek Vest. You know, uh, I've been running this camo pattern here for a little while now and absolutely love it, especially when I'm up in the timber. Uh, it's just a fantastic camo pattern that, that, uh, that Cryptek has out. So I, I actually did not need this on this trip. It was so warm, but I had it just in case. You know, I threw it on in the mornings, um, but honestly, I really didn't even need it. It was just a luxury to have it. Um, but I, I like to wear the vest because then I don't feel as restricted. And with this, with, with the Cryptek vest, it actually comes a little bit longer, which I actually like. So when I sit down, I can actually, you know, have some additional protection behind me and I can sit on that if I'm on rocks or whatever. So really, really like the Cryptek vest. It's proven to be very, very, uh, very good. So that's kind of the clothing that I wore on this trip. Um, you know, I, I'll show you here in a minute. I did, I always carry a puffy with me. I carried a lightweight puffy on this trip. Uh, knowing that the temperatures were as warm as they were. It was upwards of 73, 74 degrees, so didn't really even need that. Most mornings I would get up and wouldn't even need the vest. I would just run the merino wool, uh, lightweight, uh, with the three-quarter inch zip and the, and the hoodie, um, and I was good for the day. So that was kind of the clothing going in. Hey, a couple other things, just, you know, I always wear gaiters. I love them. Uh, I've been running the peaks now. I think this is my, maybe my third season. I'm not for sure. It's either my second or my third. Um, these things are just fantastic. You know, I love them because they keep stuff from getting out, you know, in my boots. You know, you do a lot of little creek crossings, although we didn't on this trip, but you know, it's nice when you do go through it, you don't have to worry about it if you're moving through it pretty quick to get your, get your feet wet, um, going through brush. I mean, it just, they, they are a fantastic product and I've been real happy with the Peaks Gators. Um, they, they make some really good products. So, hey, the other thing, you know, speaking of peaks, I also run their trekking poles. Um, now, I will tell you, I, I used to not run, I think, what are these? I think these are called baffles. I'm not for sure what they're called, but they screw on. Um, I used to not run these. I used to just run it just blank like that. And it worked fine, but if it's at all muddy, this thing will bury. So I started running these again, or started running them, and it really does help a lot. When you go down, you're not gonna go down too deep, especially if you got mud or something like that. The one thing I will tell you though, we were in some really, really heavy, heavy, thick brush, and even this little one was catching. So I ended up taking these off uh, as we were coming out just because they kept catching, which was a little bit frustrating. So took those off, no problem, they worked great. Um, you know, highly recommend if you are not running trekking poles, you are, you're doing way too much work. These things are fantastic. They take a ton of pressure off your knees. They help you as you're going up the mountain, give you that additional leverage. Um, they're just a game changer. So if you haven't started using trekking poles, I would recommend that you go take a peek at them. And, um, these are a great brand to, to take a look at. Hey, as far as, um, you know, kind of continuing on the outside, I was, I've been running the Muley Freak Bino Harness now for the last, I think, two years. And i got to tell you, I, I've, I've been real happy with it. it it's, it's a great system. It works well for me. It, you know, I can tighten it up pretty easily on the sides. Um, I like to carry it pretty snug against, against my chest. Uh, the other thing I like about it, too, is it's the perfect size. So if I'm doing a laying down prone shot, I can unclip this very quickly and just kind of wrap it around and use that for that rear support on my rifle, um, which I actually did on this trip, and it, and it works exceptionally well. So been running, running their system for a while. One of the things that um, you know we started incorporating into to the bottom of this probably two or three years ago is I don't go out now without um, a tourniquet. And at some point I'll have to tell you guys a story you know that happened with my brother, but. Um, this is a, this is a must have, right? I, I carry it here. I know it's always there. It's quick. If something were to happen to myself or my hunting partner, or if we come across somebody, the tourniquet's there, I know where it's at and, and it's quick access. The other thing that I'm carrying on here now is my in reach. I used to clip this onto my shoulder harness on my shoulder straps on my pack, 
But I notice a lot of times, you know, I'll set my pack down and I might, you know, just, you know, go for a quick walk, go, go glass on the other side of the mountain. You know, things happen. So I want to keep this with me at all times. So with it being on my bino harness, I don't take this off. Uh, except for when I get back to, uh, to crawl into bed at night. So I, I, I use the, uh, the Garmin InReach Mini. This is a great tool. It's a great way to stay connected with your family. If you guys aren't running something like this now, I would recommend it, man. It's just a peace of mind, not only for you, but for your loved ones back home. Um, it works exceptionally well. You know, you can text back and forth. You've got the SOS button, you know, so you can get immediate attention uh, if you're in real bad shape. So just, it's, it's a great safety net to have with you. Hey, the other things that I've got on my bino harness. So I've got, uh, it's actually a vortex, um, you know, for my binos, I can slide this in and then I can use my tripod. You know, that always goes out with me. I've gotten to the point now where most of my glassing, uh, you know, if I'm going to be glassing for a while where we're going to plan ourselves, say for a couple, two or three hours, I'm definitely using this with a tripod. It's, it's a game changer for me to, to actually see a lot more game. Um, so I, I do run that. And then, you know, on the other side here, I, I don't go without my <laughs> chapstick. I'm gonna go with a chapstick and it's gonna have SPF in it so I don't get sunburned. Um, so that's kind of what I'm running on the binos, or the bino harness. You know, I am running the, um, the Vortex I've got the, I think these are the HDs, the, uh, the 10 by 42s. I've been really, really happy with this. This is a great product. Um, no issues whatsoever. So these are the binos that I've been running for quite some time on that. So that's kind of the outside, if you will. Um, I'm going to clear this off and then I'm going to go through my lid so you guys can kind of see all those things that, that I carry in my lid. So the way we designed our lid is you can actually slide this off really quick. So this lid comes off super fast, right? You know, you guys just saw me kind of take that off. Uh, we started doing this last couple of years. Brian Call, you know, kind of was one of them that, that I think really started talking more about using his lid as the, the bag that goes into the tent with him at night. And, you know, that just makes a lot of sense, right? Because this is super fast, it's quick, and I can have everything right here that I need in a hurry at night or when I'm out, out you know, hunting all day long. So it's a big lid that we have. You know, you've got tons of space inside here. Um, you know, typically this will not be in the lid. I'm going to wear these up on my, on my hat like that. So I've got quick access to them, but they're in there right now. Um, so let me walk you through some of the things that I've got inside my lid. I've got kind of my just go-to. This I've got my toothpaste in here. I've got um, I've got Afrin. I'll talk to you guys in a minute why I have that in there. And then I've got I've got some Tums in case the stomach gets upset. I always carry Q-tips, and I'll tell you why here in a minute. I've got some Advil, and then I've just got toothpaste, toothbrush. Hydrocortisone, which is a must. Benadryl. Um, I have dental floss, which I'll tell you why here in a second. And then I've got earplugs. So actually, I do have a couple band-aids in here too. So again, this is stuff that I'm going to have with me at all times, right? I've got it with me when I'm out hunting, but I've also got it when I get back to camp in my tent. So let me start with I'll start with the Afrin. Why I have this, right? You know, well, for obvious reasons, if if you get congested out there, but that's not really the main reason why I carry it. Um, a lot of times, and I, we had an issue with my oldest boy where he would get a lot of nosebleeds. And it's quite frequent when you get up at higher elevation, right? It's gonna be, most likely it's gonna be a little bit drier. You're gonna be at higher elevation and you have a tendency to have nosebleeds. Well, a lot of people probably don't know this is if you soak a cotton ball, you know, a, a rag, whatever, soak it in Afrin, shove it up there, it'll stop the bleeding. So uh, we've been on several hunts before I knew that, where we would almost have to pack out because my son's bloody noses were so bad that we couldn't get him to stop. So that is why I always carry the Afrin with me. You know, I carry um, this eye wash container. Now, for those that know me, I virtually have no eyelashes. So I am getting stuff in my eyes all the time. I've been in the emergency room, I don't know how many times to get my eyes flushed. 
So I always carry an eye wash tool that I can do dump you know, water into it and then I can rinse my eye out. But the other reason why I carry Q-tips is that I've had to roll my eyelid up to actually get stuff out. So, which is a little extreme, but you can wet this down and you can actually roll your eyelid back to get anything out and then helps kind of wash it out. So these are some of the things that I carry with me. Um, like I said, hydro, hydrogen, hydrocortisone cream, you know, if you get bit by something, you got quick access to it there. You know, one of the things that we take with us quite often is, you know, some type of beef jerky, right? So I, it never fails to me. I get, I get that caught in my teeth. <laughs> so I always have this with me, which is, you know, my dental floss. Um, so if that does happen, cause I can drive myself nuts trying to get that out. Hey, the other thing that I have in here is earplugs. Some of you guys have heard me talk about this before. You know, one, if I lose these, right? Cause these pop off. If I lose one of those, I've got a backup plan with, with my, with my just standard earplugs. But this is what I sleep with every night. Every single night I put my earplugs in, I sleep like a champ. So these always go with me. Um, what else do I have in here? So I've got a Benadryl bite stick. So, you know, it's just, if you get bit, you can rub it on a bite right there. It's nice to have this, it's convenient. And then, like I said, you know, you've got Advil and you've got some Tums here. So that's kind of what goes in this little pouch here. Um, it's just, it's not my first aid kit, but this is what's with me at all times. You know, so when I get in and out of my tent or when I'm in the back country, you know, hiking or hunting or whatever, it's with me. Toilet paper, it's a must have. I always obviously have wipes as well. Um, I've got a couple things in here I'll walk through. This trip, we actually, my, Brody and I split up quite a bit. So I usually don't take walkie talkies, um, but we did on this trip and I'm super glad that we did. Just, it was another way for me to stay in touch with him. Uh, he doesn't have an in reach. So this, this actually worked really well. So that was nice. Um, these are the, the bullets for the, for the rifle. So I always carry these with me. I've got an extra, I've got these here and then I've got three that go in the gun. So I've got a total of, let's see, what is it? Nine, 10, 11. I've got 11 rounds uh, that I carry in with me. I've got my titanium spoon that just stays in my lid. So I always know where it's at. And then back to my trekkers. So my trekking poles, I do carry these rubber pieces that go on the end. I don't hardly ever use them, but if I get into a situation where we're stocking game and it's real rocky or whatever, I may throw these on just to quiet it up a little bit. Um, so those stay in here. I do have my headlamp, which, you know, I've been running this, um, this black diamond for a lot of years. I'm actually going to be switching over to the peaks one. I just haven't gotten to it yet, but this has been a great headlamp all the years. One of the things that we do have inside here is this hook. So my headlamp always just is attached right there. So I always know where it's at. It's fast and it's easy to get to. So I do run that. Um, and that's kind of everything inside my lid. Now, specifically inside this, this storage bag here, and this is our pack sacks. If you didn't see that, we've, we've got these pack sacks. They're super great. Um, I do carry inside here, this is my water filtration system. Um, I started running, so this is by Platypus. This came out about, about two, well, about a year and a half ago, they launched this. I was, I was fortunate enough to get some samples early on and I've been running it now for two years. I am sold on this. This thing is fantastic. It only weighs three ounces and the flow rate on it is second to none. It is, it is crazy fast. And the fact that it's only three ounces, to me, it's actually lighter than my SteriPen. I think my SteriPen was 3.8. And at times, you know, I've had issues with SteriPens where the batteries didn't work right. With this, it's almost fail, fail proof. So you basically have your filtration system here, and then you've got your dirty bag here. And you just fill up your dirty bag, and then you attach your filter onto your dirty bag, and then you squeeze it. The flow rate is phenomenal. I did a video on it, so we'll get it out up on the web at some point for you guys to see just how fast that is. Um, so we utilize this strictly on this trip. And then I had another dirty bag, which was a four liter dirty bag um, that I took on this trip as well. This is a little bulky for what I, I like, but it's what I had available at the time. So we did take that. Um, 
again, we would just make this, you know, a total dirty bag. We were camped at about 7,500 feet and where water was about uh, 1,500 feet below us. So we were making trips down and back. And so we had four liters here and then with our, with our Nalgene's or GSI's as well as this. And then we actually found a, a water bottle on the trip. Um, we were to have almost 11 ounce or 11 uh, liters of water. So didn't have to go back and forth every day, but more than I wanted to. So anyways, that was the, the, the filtration system. I did run this um, by 6 a.m., their uh, ground cloth, which it's a multi-purpose, right? You know, this, this is nice in the fact that, you know, if, I, if I'm, you know, laying my gear out, because we moved three times on this trip, so, you know, I would be unpacking everything. I could throw everything right on top of this, keeps it clean, nice and neat. But then as hot as it was, it was great to be able to get this up and give some shade and shelter. So uh, I did run that. And then I do have a couple actually stakes that I also use with this because that I can stake it down, use my trekking poles um, on the front side. So it works really, really well to give some good shade. And, you know, sometimes you just want to get out of it, right? When it's 70, 75 degrees out, and you're glassing all day, um, and sometimes where you're where you're hunting, it's hard to find good shade. So there's been other times where, you know, I've used it for for shelter, right, in a rainstorm, things like that. So these are kind of all the things that that are in the lid. Now I will tell you, on the underside here, nice thing is we've got this storage pocket right here, and this is where my lid goes and my car keys. So I just put it in here, and I I never have to worry about it again. You do have the ability with this lid also. To put any it's another pocket so you could actually run a water bladder under here or you could put more storage in there so that's kind of everything that i had in my lid um, on this trip as you can see i mean there's a ton of room it allows you the flexibility to kind of load it without worrying about it spilling and you know i'm able to put all of this stuff in here and i could probably put actually quite a bit more into this lid um, but this is how I ran it this, this, this past season, or this last hunt. So that's that on the lid. Let me talk about the bag real quick. So I'll, I'll just kind of continue with the outside. Um, so I always run a hip belt pouch, especially with rifle season. And the reason being is one, I carry my, my range finder in here. And this particular range finder that I was running on this, this trip is the Gunworks range finder. Um, it's the, was it the G7, I think is what it is. I've had this for, for a lot of years and it's a great range. It's heavy though. This thing weighs almost a pound. Um, but I've been using it for so long, I'm so familiar and comfortable with it. I'm able to put all of the different uh, rifles you know, because I think yeah, I can store up to five different rifles, the, the ballistics into here. Uh, this thing's proven to be bulletproof. I can't tell you how many times I've knocked this thing off where it's rolled 20, 30 feet down the mountain. And, you know, it just continues to, to perform exceptionally well. Um, you know, it has a built-in alt altimeter. It does temperature, barometric pressure. Uh, you, you load in all of your, your data for whatever rifle you're shooting, your ballistics. And then it gives you a, um, you know, a shoot to or gives you an MOA, you know, based on where you're at, the altitude and so forth. So this is a fantastic tool. Um, there's a lot of technology though that's come out since this and in a much smaller version and probably a little bit, uh, you know, more cost effective. But I've had this for a long time. It, it works really, really well. So I run that uh, in my hip belt pouch. And maybe I'll show you guys maybe here in a little bit how I also use that hip belt pouch when I'm carrying my rifle. Um, so continuing with the outside of my bag, I'm gonna sh pull this off real quick. So as I was saying earlier, when I'm glassing, I really started to transition to where I'm, I'm gonna start to rely more and more on my tripod for stability and really for less fatigue. So. I've been running the outdoorsman for a lot of years. Um, it's a little heavy, but again, I'm very familiar with it. You know, I, I've talked a lot about going to a lighter one. The nice thing about the heavier though one, if it's windy at all, you know, you get a little bit more stability out of it. Um, you know, I, I've used this, this, this head here for a lot of different years. It's proven just to be a great tripod, but it is heavy. 
I think total weight on my tripod, uh, I want to say this is right at three pounds. So it is a bit heavy because I know you can pick them up for, for quite a bit less in weight, go to a carbon fiber type footprint, which is something I probably will do. I just, I just haven't made the switch yet, um, but I've been real happy with it. You know, as far as the, um, the spotting scope, I've been running the Vortex HD, what is it, the 11 by 50, I think it is, you know, for, for a long time. It's, it weighs absolutely nothing. It's super lightweight. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, so I've been running this for a lot of years. It's, it weighs nothing. I mean, I think it's 24 ounces if I remember right. So it's super lightweight. It's quick. You know, I can, I can use it. I usually have it just sitting next to me, you know, cause I'm doing the majority of my glassing off of here with my binos. And then if I see something that I really want to try to zoom in on a little bit more, then I'll, then I'll grab this, um, the Vortex Razor HD, the, the 11 by 50. So fantastic uh, range finder and the weight on it is next to nothing. So that's kind of that on those. Um, so the other things that's on the outside of my bag, so I carry just my, my, my fuel for my jet boil. I'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, on the outside of the 4K, we've got an upper pocket and a lower pocket. These are stretch pockets. And I'll show you what I carry in those. So up top here, um, I actually have a couple pairs of gloves. So I've got these Cryptek gloves here. They're kind of a mid-weight, lightweight glove. Um, they're great. I also have some Merino gloves. Again, I'm a Merino fanatic, um, but these are super lightweight. You know, in the mornings, you may or may not need these. Um, you know, when it was 70, 73 degrees during the day, certainly didn't need it then. But there's a couple mornings where I use a, and I've got it in here, but I use a titanium coffee cup. And those things just transfer the heat straight through it. So I'll actually use these a lot of times because that coffee cup's so hot. Um, so that's what I had in there for gloves, which again, probably didn't need that much on this trip. Um, this is kind of my, I guess you call it my first aid kit. So I'll quickly run through this. Um, I carry in here, so I've got a pyro putty lighter. This thing is fantastic. You know, it's a rechargeable. Um, so I carry this in here for emergencies, but I use it, you know, if we're going to have a fire or anything. This is more just a keepsake. So my youngest boy, Ty, gave me this. He was worried that dad would get cold when he was little. Um, this is actually one of those, you know, you can kind of take it and you can cut wood with it. Um, he picked this up probably... I don't know, eight to 10 years ago, I've carried this. Never used it, um, but it's always in here. And so I appreciate that from him. Uh, I've got some, actually this is just wool. And I think it's Woo Roo or something like that is the name of the company. Um, guy over at Western Contours, he's, he's the one that told me about this. But it is literally just wool fibers. So if you do get a hot spot, you know, on, on your feet or wherever, you can literally just stick it on that place, you know, say it's on the bottom of your foot and then just put your sock back over and it creates a, a barrier. I've had to use this before. This stuff is fantastic. I mean, this weighs absolutely nothing, but I do have this in here for myself or for whoever. Um, you know, I've got standard band-aids. I've got some gauze. I've got some more bandages and gauze. Um, so then in here, I've got an additional, so I've got more visine, so I've got eye for my eyes, you know, in case I have any issues. I got another thing of chapstick. Uh, I have Neosporin in here, and then I have some um, Rolaids, and then also in here I have uh, Benadryl. So I carry the Benadryl in case you know you have an allergic reaction, to anything. It's great. Hey, also if I can't sleep at night, you know, night after night, I may take a Benadryl so I can get some good rest. Um, so I carry that, but I also carry um, the Benadryl and an EpiPen. So one of my boys uh, is highly allergic to peanuts. And so I have this always with us um, for him or anybody that needs it. Uh, I do have a clotting agent gauze. And then Dennis actually gave this to me a long time ago. Uh, it's a backup headlamp, and I think it has a 10-year battery on it. So I've probably had this for at least six or seven years. 
but it just it stays in in here in case I need it. Um, I've got my pyro putting, which is a fantastic fire starter. Absolutely love this stuff. Um, so I carry that, and then I do actually have some silicones, and this is more. I use this more if I'm using a regular water filtration system when they have O-rings on it. Um, but I've also noticed even on the, the filtration system I was showing you earlier today by Platypus, there is an O-ring system on there. I can lubricate those if, it, if it's starting to leak at all. So I do carry that with me as well. Um, so that's kind of what's in my first aid kit. It's a bare bones, but you know, I think between that and some of the other things that I'm carrying, you know, in my night bag that goes in my lid, um, I feel pretty good that, that we're covered. So that's my, my first aid kit. Um, so moving down to the second pouch down here, this is where typically I will have my puffy. Um, I will usually always stick that down there, but then I've got a rain jacket and this is just an ultra light rain jacket. I've had it forever. It's actually by first light. It weighs absolutely nothing and usually I forget it's even in there. But the one thing I can rest assured is it is in there. I never go in the back country without a rain jacket. Um, I just don't do it. You know, some people, you know, will go in with pants as well. I don't carry the pants as much anymore. I used to, but since I'm wearing gaiters all the time and my rain jacket comes down, you know, I just got a small section that actually would potentially get wet. Um, now I can tell you if it's a downpour situation, then I will get wet in that jacket. You know, I need something, you know, Cryptex got some phenomenal rain gear. You know, I would definitely wear some of the heavier rain gear made by them if it's going to be a big rainstorm type. You know, when I think about bear season, right, early, you know, when you're in April, May, we get a lot of rains out here in Idaho. So I would definitely wear something like that. But for this hunt, my ultralight worked out fine. And like I said, it was, it was so hot, we didn't have any issues with it. Um, so that's kind of the outside bag, how I carry things, where I carry things. Let me talk about two things though on my hip belt. So I do run, uh, and this is fairly recent for me. I've been an Algene guy forever, uh, but I did start running the GSI last year and I'm still, I'm still kind of figuring out if I like it or not. I love the fact that whatever I put in here is going to stay cold or it's gonna stay hot. I'm one of those guys, right, when I get ice water at home, it drives my wife crazy. I'm gonna fill it all the way this high with ice. You know, so I like my water super cold. Um, I have not really done much coffee in here because I carry a separate coffee cup. So maybe that's something I should think about. I could maybe take that titanium out, but um, I've ran this, like I said, last year, year and a half. Um, this thing's fantastic. I will tell you, Brian talked about it on one of his, and I actually did it on this trip where I've, I've got a, a pinched nerve in my upper back and I actually use this as a foam roller underneath my sleeping pad. And I was able to kind of roll it out at night and it made it actually a pretty big difference. I mean, you could do that certainly with an, with an algae as well, but ran the GSI. Um, those things are really, really nice. It's a stainless steel, keeps things hot or cold. Um, so I am, I am starting to like that a little bit more. Um, so then on top of that, I run a pistol. Now, this is a 40 caliber, it's my Glock. Um, I've ran this thing forever, so I do take this in with me. Um, we had a situation on a bear hunt two years ago, I guess it was, where I did not take my pistol with me. And I had actually shot a bear and we had to go and retrieve it um, into some really, really thick stuff. Uh, unfortunately, we lost the bear, but I did not have anything to go in there with. So trying to get in there with a rifle just does not work. It was so thick. Um, so 99.9% .9 of the time I've always had a rifle or a pistol except for that one trip. So anyways, I don't go without my pistol um, with me anymore. So I take that out there with me. So that's kind of everything on the outside of the bag. I'm going to clear this off and then I'll, I'll get into the inside of the bag real quick here for you. So I'm going to leave the fuel. Um, I run a jet boil, you know, on it. I've had a jet boil forever. One canister worked fantastic for, for myself and for Brody together. We just shared it. Um, so no issues at all with that. So I talked about my puffy. I had it down inside here. This is just an ultralight puffy that I had on this trip. If it's, if it's going to be super cold, then I'm going to run probably a Cryptek, which is, you know, maybe a synthetic, 
Um, it's just, you know, a little bit warmer. I just needed something super, super light, so I just grabbed that one. Hey, as far as extra clothing, I really don't take a lot with me. You, you know, I walked you through everything that was that I that I wore in. You know, I do bring a couple extra things with me. You know, um, on this trip, I brought another short sleeve merino wool top, just a lightweight one. You know, in case I I needed you know to layer up just a little bit. You know, to put that merino uh, hoodie you know over that. Uh, I bring a couple pair of socks, although. I probably brought one pair too many on this trip. I actually had my, the pair that I wore in, and then I had two more that I brought with me on the trip. I did not need um, two more, I only needed one more. So that's probably something I could have saved a little bit of weight on. I do bring you know, an extra pair of underwear, so I will change you know, on the hunt as well, um, probably midway through, clean, clean, put some clean undies on, and then, Hey, when I go to bed at night, and I'll show here in a little bit when I get into my sleep system, you know, I, I've started using the quilt system. Um, this is probably now my, maybe my third season using the quilt. And, and I'm still learning how best to utilize that system. I am falling in love with it though. It gives me way more room. Um, but the one thing is you're laying directly on top of your pad. And for me, especially if I'm hot, I don't like sticking to that pad. So what I started wearing are just some ultra, ultra thin bottoms uh, long, you know, I picked these up. I think my wife picked these up at Costco, honestly. They weigh absolutely nothing. And my only point of wanting that is just a barrier between me and my sleeping pad so I'm not sticking and touching it. The other thing that I always bring with me, and this is more of a luxury, but I always bring them. I like to get my socks off at night and I don't want to put on dirty socks. And I've noticed for me, my feet get cold in my sleeping bag because they've been sweaty all day. You know, and usually I get in, you know, take your boots off, take your socks off, and you're just kind of sweaty, clammy. I know it sounds crazy, but I want a pair of cotton socks. <laughs> so I always carry some short cotton socks that I put on. Um, so those are all the extra clothes that I took on this trip. And that was it. So there wasn't a whole, whole lot. But again, it wasn't a cold trip. It was, it was pretty warm. Guys, I've got my kill kit here um, that I carry with me, obviously. Um, you know, pretty basic kill kit. I mean, I, I'm running a goat knife in here. You know, I've been running this one here for a while. It's, a, it's the one that's got the uh, Allen screws on it as well. Um, you know, goat knife makes some phenomenal products, just no weight to it at all. So, been really happy with that. Um, you know, I've got you know, surgical gloves in here for cleaning. I've got way too many pairs of those. Definitely have some paracord. I've got some replaceable blades. I do run in, um, in here as well my batteries. I've got an extra set of batteries for my range finders. And for some reason, I've always just put them in my kill kit. So that's where they, that's where they live. And then obviously I have the, uh, I have my actual game bags themselves. These are 6 a.m. I've been running their stuff here for a little while and they work great. So that's my, my kill kit. I do have the one replaceable. Um, I have a rubber band that I, or a couple rubber bands that I put in here as well in case I want to use that for the, uh, the tag on the animal. Um, and then that's, that's kind of it on my kill kit. So, so pretty basic. Moving on in, so some of the luxuries. So here's that titanium coffee cup that I told you guys about. Use it for a lot of things. I've had this thing, I would say, for at least a decade. Um, it weighs nothing, but the heat transfers 100% through it. So that's the one thing you got to watch out for with, with the titanium. Um, but it's a great little tool, great little uh, cup. <sighs> guys, this is, this is where it starts to get a little funny. Um, there are certain things I will sacrifice and certain things I will not. And one of them is a pillow. This thing weighs four ounces. I've had it forever. I love it though for the back country. You know, it folds up like you just saw down to, it's a little bit bigger, but you know, I've got a herniated disc between C5 and C6. So if I don't sleep well, or if I can't get comfortable, can't get my head right, you know, it just, man, you just get worn out because you're not sleeping on a trip. So this is one of those luxury things for me. Um, you know, I've, I've just always taken a pillow in and I'm, and, I, and I'm willing to carry the extra four ounces, so to speak, so that I can be comfortable. So 
that's the pillow that I'm running. Uh, that's actually just, uh, I think that's an REI pillow. So moving on in here, um, I did want to show you though, this is the, the, the puffy jacket that I typically will be wearing. I picked this up from Cryptek. This is a, a heavier, dutier one that honestly, this thing, and it's longer. I really like the fact that it's longer because I can kind of covers the backside a bit. Um, so when you're glassing, you're bent over or whatever, you're not getting a breeze up on the, I, I've just been really, really happy with this, with this puffy jacket. So that is the one in a little bit colder gear that I'm running. All right, getting inside a little bit further here. So I've had this jet boil for, it has to be a decade. This thing has been through the ringer and I cannot break it. And I'm one of those guys that I just, if it's working, I typically don't change. I'm not the guy that's gonna go out there and simmer. I'm just full blast. <laughs> I just, give me my food, I wanna go to bed. Um, so, you know, that's just, it works for me. Now, I, I would like to probably get the, the one that's a little bit shorter, but again, I, I just can't break this thing. I've had it forever. It works really, really well. Um, so I've stuck with it. So this is the jet boil that I'm running. So hey, from a sleep perspective, let me talk to you a little bit about my tent. I run it a lot of different tents, but I've been running this marmot for, I don't know, I've probably had this thing for five years, I'm guessing. It's, uh, it's an ultralight two-person, weighs right at three pounds with the, uh, with the footprint. So, I mean, it's, it's not a super, super light tent, but it's pretty dang light at, you know, at, at only three pounds. Um, it's, you know, it says it's a two-person. I've got another one that's a, a big Agnes that is a true one-person that probably is about a pound less but it is like you are a bear taco is what my wife calls it. Cause just, you just barely slide into this thing and you got no room. So this is a two person, but for me it works really well cause I've got a little bit of room. I've slept two people in it before. Don't like it, super tight. For one person, this is fantastic. It works great. Although I will tell you, this is an area that I think I will be upgrading you know, here over the next year. There's a, a couple uh, TP type styles that I'm interested in trying out. Um, leaning towards trying to take some weight out, probably looking at the Dyneema type setup. Um, so more to come for me. I'm gonna go maybe think about that a little bit more, but this is what I ran this system, uh, worked great. I've ran it for, like I said, many, many years. So this was a luxury item I took on this trip. Um, it's a Helinox chair, thing only weighs one pound, one ounce. Now, I told you guys, I'm getting to the point where I'm doing a lot of glassing just sitting for long periods of time. And you know, I've tried a lot of different ways to get comfortable doing that. I've done just the glassing pads, which those, those work good, um, but they don't give me any, any back support. So I've tried a chair called Crazy Creek, I think, where you can actually sit it down, cinch it down on the sides. Gives you good support, but not that comfortable on the backside. So I thought, hey, you know what? I'm gonna try something out. I typically like to try something new on a hunt. Um, so I tried this chair out. The weight is fantastic. It's nothing. Like I said, it's one pound, one ounce, but I got to admit it, it hurt my lower back. Um, as I was sitting all day glass and that, that bottom swell a little bit of the chair. I don't know if it was that, it just caused me more to hunch over. So I'm going to probably say this isn't for me. So I tried it. Um, it's, you know, the weight's great, but it hurt my lower back. So won't be something I'll be taking back out there with me. Um, now I don't have all of my food in here, but I do have a couple of meals that are still made up. So I just typically, I run the initial ascent, obviously dry bag, and I always have my paracord attached to the D ring on here. So when I get there, I can just literally throw the paracord up over a branch, try to get it up, you know, eight to 10 feet and then pull it up. So I've got all my food. Um, I'm not going to get into my food per se today. Maybe that's another video we can do at a later date, but I will tell you, I average 1.2 pounds per day of food. So you figure it up over a five day period, you know, you're going to be whatever that is, you know, 5.8 pounds or, or almost six pounds roughly right in food. Um, that's about the rate that I go. And I'm pretty consistent every single day with what I eat that doesn't bother me. I can eat the exact same thing for breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner for a week, and, and I've got no issues with that. So, um, so anyways, this, is, this goes in my bag. 
And like I said, I can just throw that up in the tree and I'm good to go. So moving on down, and this is where it really gets comical. So before I bring this out, I gotta tell you. <laughs> so last year, Dennis and I were on a bear hunt and my sleeping pad popped. So it went totally flat. And I think we were probably, I don't know, four or five, five miles in, something like that. So I was hunting and one of my, my boys, Brody, was with us. He and I were off hunting. Dennis was off hunting with some other folks. And Dennis knew that my pad had, had popped. That dude actually walked all the way back to his truck and then came all the way back. And that night before I get ready to go crawl into what I knew was gonna be one heck of an uncomfortable night, uh, he flings me this, this sleeping pad. So I've been trying to get a new pad and the one that I want is get the, uh, the Neo Air uh, X-Therm by uh, Therma, Therma Rest. And that's the one that I want, but it's been on back order forever. So I haven't been able to get it. So the one that I have, got to tell you, you talk about a big <laughs> sleeping pad. This thing is ginormous. It weighs uh, 1.8 pound or one pound, eight ounces. It's a big Agnes. Now I will tell you, I splurged a little bit on this one. The fact that this is 25 inches wide and I got, I slept like a champ on this trip. Um, it makes me think maybe it is worth that extra weight. I don't know. Cause I was getting a good eight or nine hours of sleep every night. Um, but anyways, it's got a decent R value at about a 4.2. So it's not off the chart, but it, it's fine for me for where I'm at. I'm a hot sleeper typically. Um, but this is obviously way bigger than I would typically carry in, but this is what I had available. So this is what I took. It was phenomenal but it was heavy. So that was my sleeping pad. Um, I talked to you guys earlier about the quilt system. So this is my quilt. Now I run in a stuff sack. It's actually a big Agnes stuff sack, but it's also um, allows me to, to take this stuff sack. It, it has this attachment point here on the bottom and I can fill it up with air and, and fill up my sleeping pad. I used to not do that but then I come to realize how much moisture I was pushing into that sleeping pad and the bacteria that starts to grow. And plus when you're at seven, 8,000 feet, um, blowing up those pads, you know, kind of takes a lot of air. So anyways, I started running this and I just use it as my stuff sack to carry my, my quilt in. Um, and then what I can also do is I can use it if I wanted to as a pillow. But as you guys saw, I like my, my other pillow. So, Inside here, this is my, my quilt. Now this is by uh, Cedar Ridge. And I, like I said, I've had this for a couple years. This is a 20 degree and I'm absolutely in love with this thing. Now, the one thing that I will tell you that I have a kind of love hate relationship with is the bottom of this, the foot box. It's nice in the fact that this foot box, I can actually cinch this down or I can just open it up. That is a nice feature, but I will also tell you there's downside to that because air gets into this. So at night, my feet get really cold. So what I do now is I'll stuff my puffy in the bottom here, or I'll just put my socks right here and tighten this thing down so that air can't get in there and then that seems to help. Um, but, but what I like about this is if, if I am glass and close by camp, you know, I can actually just undo this thing and, you know, I can quilt it around me if I wanted to and, and, and just kind of look at it from, from this perspective. So it just, I, I just love this thing. And it's, you know, been something that I've been running for a couple years here. Um, this thing weighs nothing, it's 19 ounces. So 19 ounce, 20 degree uh, sleep system. And, you know, couple this with the sleeping pad. And I would recommend, you know, you gotta have a higher R value on your pad. I think the one that I'm looking at is like a 6.4 or 6.9, I can't remember, uh, that Thermarest, which is a really, really nice pad. So that'll be the one that I'll be going with in the future. So anyways, that's, that's my, my quilt. I absolutely love it. Um, so I think, guys, that's everything. So a couple other things, though. I do run the initial scent uh, water bottle holder on the side here you know, for my GSI or for my Nalgene works fantastic. It's insulated and it has structure to it. And the way this is positioned and where it sits, 
it sits in this dead spot back here. So you're never going to hit it with your hand. It's out of the way. I absolutely love this water bottle holder. It's fantastic. So that's everything on the bag. Um, let me talk to you about the rifle I used on this trip. Now, this is a new rifle. I actually bought this rifle for my son, Ty. It was his 18th birthday. And um, I ended up getting this for him. So this, as you can see, we've got a, a cover over. This is a solo hunter gun cover. I've had it for a long time. Um, works fine. I probably will be switching, though, over to the Stealthy. Uh, I really like what, what they've done with theirs, and I like the handle aspect of it. So I'll probably be switching over to that. But uh, this is a Tika T3. It's a 7mm Remington mag. Uh, it's their ultra light. Now the gun with the scope weighs right at nine pounds. So it's, it's not crazy light like some of the new stuff that's coming out with the carbon fiber barrels, but this is a fantastic starter gun. Um, I've been helping him for the last six months. We've been trying to get a load dialed in and I feel like we finally did. Um, so we reload all, you know, pretty much everything that we're shooting. And we got this gun dialed in. Um, this is the first time though I've used the Leopold scope. This is the VX5 and it is the, uh, I think it's a three by 15. This is a fantastic scope. I've been really, really happy with it. You know, I've, I've been shooting for a lot of years, the gun works, the uh, 7LRM uh, with the Night Force scope, uh, which is a phenomenal scope, but it's super heavy. I gotta tell you, this is just as clear in my mind, I, I've just been in love with it. So uh, this is the rifle that I used on this, this hunt. Uh, did exceptionally well, carried really, really well. And to me, since I had been carrying the bigger, you know, the Gunworks rifle for a lot of years, this was super lightweight at nine pounds. Um, just fell in love with it. So that's, uh, that's pretty much everything that I took in and kind of the whys of what I took. Um, so I guess for me guys, whenever I finish a hunt up, one of the things that I do is I always ask myself, okay, what would I change? What would I do different? So I can tell you, uh, there's a couple things that I would not take back in on, on the hunt. One being that chair. I think I mentioned that earlier. Wouldn't do that. I'm going to, I'm going to continue to look for ways because I want to have comfort while I'm glassing. Um, I feel like if, if I'm more comfortable while I'm sitting there all day long, then I'm gonna be more willing to, to put the time and the energy in into the glassing. So I'm gonna to continue to look at some other, other options there for, for that. Maybe, maybe it's the stealthy, uh, the, the pad that they've got, the glassing pad. You know, it's kind of a multi-purpose. So I'm gonna take a look at that and then I'll take a look at a few other things as well. Um, the walkie-talkie, that was an unusual thing to take in. So probably pretty rare for me to take that back in unless I'm hunting with, with my kids again. Um, Outside of that, that's probably really the only things that I would say I won't take in on the next hunt. So um, that's pretty much it. That was, you know, for roughly right, that was for a five and a half day hunt and total weight, everything. Now I weigh everything. That's the gun. That's my, you know, with my, uh, my bino harness, with my trekking poles, everything. I was right at 62 pounds going in. Now that's a little heavy. But um, that's where I was at, and, and that's with a full, you know, full GSI. That's the total, total weight walking in at 62 pounds. So um, hopefully you guys got something out of this. If, um, you know, if you guys have any questions on any of the gear, just hit us up, and we can get back to you on, on any more specifics that you may have, any other questions. But, hey, these are some things that, that, that work out well for me, um, just things that I've learned over the years may not work great for you and that's fine everybody's got their preferences as to what works what doesn't uh, always love to hear feedback though if there's things you guys are doing little tricks like the afrin trick or the q-tip trick or if you got any things like that that you guys use in the back country that you feel like would be really good for us to know let's share it and hey we would love to share that with the audience because it's this is a community right we want to we want to help everybody out, and uh, if you got some tricks up the sleeve, let us know. We'd love to, to share those. So, hey, thanks for your guys' time. Appreciate it.